Hey guys, welcome to another DaVinci Resolve editing tutorial. And in this video, um, I'm going to be talking about the new DaVinci Resolve 19's plugin called the Film Look Creator and comparing it to Dehancer. So I've been, you know, looking on the web and, you know, different forums and other people's videos and opinions about the Film Look Creator. And a lot of them are saying that it is the new Dehancer killer. And I just wanted to see if that's the case. And we're going to be exploring that in this video. So we're going to be comparing some of the features to it. And I'll be discussing more towards the end of the video, whether it will be replacing Dehancer or if it's a nice complimentary plugin that the new DaVinci Resolve 19 now has. So um, let's just get into this video. So as you can see, I've opened up my DaVinci Resolve. I've added a few clips in. I've done a basic color correction. Uh, let's just open up the Film Look Creator and let's see what sort of presets it have. So by default, it goes to 65 millimeter. So when I just turn it on and off, you can see that it does something to the image, which gives it a little bit of a, a film look. So um, I'm just going to go to the drop down menu. And as you can see, you've got 65 mil, 35 mil, cinematic, which gives you that sort of um, cinemascope sort of bars. You get the bleach bypass look where it almost makes it black and white, but not really. There's still a bit of color in there. Uh, nostalgic, uh, default, no effects. And then clean slate. Clean slate is pretty much the beginning of, you know, just so you can adjust it manually yourself. So I'm just gonna turn it off. And now let's look over at the Dehancer and see what you get. So with Dehancer, let's just check that. So I'm just gonna leave the sources Rec 709. And we're going to go to the film profiles. So as you can see with Dehancer, you get a lot of um, film profiles. And these are actual like film stock replications. So if there's a certain film stock you're after, hopefully Dehancer actually has it. So then you can choose which one you want to emulate. And as you can see, it automatically adjusts the color, the exposure, the contrast points. If you look in the darker areas, you can expand the black point and white point. I'm not going to really fiddle around with that. I do have another video where I go in depth with Dehancer, which um, you can see up here, um, somewhere up here in the card. So if you want to go in depth with Dehancer, feel free to look at that video. It's still pretty much relevant, even though I did that back in DaVinci Resolve 17, it still works. So pretty much with Film Look and um, Dehancer, you get it adjust the exposures, uh, contrast, highlights, all of that sort of stuff, white balance. So I'm gonna have a look at um, the Film Look. So the next one in Film Look is the Split Tone. So let's just uh, enable the Split Tone. Oops, let me just check that on. So when you adjust it, you can see now it's doing a Split Tone sort of look. Uh, you can adjust the hue angle. So if you want it to be a bit more stylized, you know, having a bit of a green roof to purple shadows. You can do that as well. So you can really adjust things there. You can adjust the pivot as well to further tweak your settings. So that's pretty much the split tone. Now you have a very similar thing inside of Dehancer. Let me just turn this note off. Uh, let's just open this one up. So the color head. So the color head is essentially the split toning. So you can um, adjust the yellows and blues. Preferably, I like to gang them. So let's just reset these. Gang them will give you a bit more of a subtle look. It's not going to add a huge amount. Yeah, there's a little bit more fiddling with the color head so you can you know, adjust things a bit more. You can preserve exposure or not. I find with the color head inside of Dehancer, you actually get more of a natural look compared to the film look. The film look just kind of exaggerates the colors. The color head inside of the Dehancer makes it a bit more subtle and realistic and all that sort of stuff. A bit more, yeah, a bit more natural, I would say. So let me just reset all of these. So the film look, uh, you've also got vignettes, you know, which is pretty much the same as you get in Dehancer. You can adjust it, you can adjust the size, all that sort of stuff. Now let's go over to the Dehancer and see how you can adjust the vignette there. I'm just going to scroll down to vignette. Vignette. Uh, let's just enable it. Now you get more adjustments uh, parameters inside of Dehancer Pro. So you can, you know, adjust the exposure and it affects the edges a bit more. 
Um, you can adjust the size. Uh, you can also adjust the feather. So, of course, when I adjust the feather, you'll be able to see how it's affecting the image a little bit more, just for you know the purpose of this video. Um, the aspect ratio, so you can make it you know a bit more concentrated. Um, so you do get some more parameters with the enhancer to really customize the vignette. Probably the reason why a lot of people are saying that this is going to be taking over Dehancer is because for the first time in DaVinci Resolve 19, you actually get a halation effect, you get bloom effects, all of that sort of stuff. So let's just enable halation. Let's just go to you know the contrast, the areas, just so you can see the effects. Um, it's just the amount, so you can see that it exaggerates it a little bit more. You can adjust the radius of it so it's more intense. Um, you can adjust the hue, so usually with the halation effect, it's a little bit more on the red side of things, so well, that's a little bit too red. You need a little bit. I'm just eyeballing it here, so about here looks a bit more natural in terms of the color. I'm going to dial it back, so now you get a bit more of a subtle halation. Yeah, so you get the halation effect inside of DaVinci Resolve 19 now, which is actually really cool. I'm just going to uncheck that. Now let's go over to Dehancer. Yeah, so let's just enable halation. So again, with Dehancer Pro, you get a lot more parameters to adjust. You actually can enable mask mode so you can see exactly what it's affecting. So as you can see when I zoom in, it's the edges of the building, um, that sort of rooftop the buildings in the background, you can really see what it's doing. So you can adjust the source limiter, um, background gain, smoothness, local diffusion, so you can make it more intense, global diffusion, so you can really intensify it. So you can just check back and off. Um, I find with Dehancer, it makes it a little bit more natural. I find the Film Look Creator halation looks a little bit more stylized compared to Dehancer, but um, that's just my opinion. Uh, let's go back to the Film Look Creator. So that was halation, so now bloom. So that's another um, effect that is very similar to Dehancer inside of the Film Look Creator plugin, is you can enable bloom, which pretty much gives it that sort of Pro Mist filter look. So let's just uh, zoom in a bit, just so we can see what it's doing to these brighter areas. So let's just enable it again. So it's a bit more subtle. Yeah, adjust the amount and then the radius. And yeah, it's pretty much it in terms of um, that sort of bloom effect, which is actually a really nice feature to have. Now the bloom inside of um, Dehancer is advanced and all that sort of stuff. So let's just enable it. And just like Halation, with Bloom, you can do the mask mode. So let's just uncheck that. So as you can see, when you look at it, um, there is a Bloom effect. Um, I find that it's, again, more subtle. It does have more of a natural sort of look to it compared to the one that you get inside of you know, the film or creator. So the film or creator, it has grain as well. Now I know you can put grain in separately, especially in the older versions of DaVinci Resolve, but again, it didn't really look natural. I believe that the grain that they've added in the film or creator gives it more of that realistic looking grain that you get on actual film stock. Um, so let's just zoom in. So as you can see, there's a bit of grain you know, in the mid-tones. Yeah, in the darker areas of the image, it seems to fall off, which is actually really neat. So a lot of film stock, uh, the grain tends to be in the mid-tones instead of, you know, just across the whole image. So um, that's really cool. Again, you can adjust the amount. So let's just, let's just crank that up just for the sake of this. Um, of course, you have presets. So you have your 65 mil, uh, you've got your 35 mil one, 16 mil, um, 8 mil, which gets blurrier, and um, you get thicker grain. But you know, we just leave it at custom, so you can adjust it yourself. So you can adjust the size. Uh, you can adjust the softness. Usually, it's nicer to have it almost halfway, and then saturation. 
image defocus, usually, you know, if you're shooting high res, you don't want to defocus it a lot. So I'm gonna, I'm not gonna make it 100%, you know, when it comes to grain, you might want to soften the image just a fraction. But yeah, so you get a lot of controls with the grain. Now I'm just gonna uncheck that. And now let's go over to Dehancer. Let's just check that. We go down to film grain, so let's just enable it. So there we go. So we've just added some film grain. And right off the bat, it looks really nice. So when you're adjusting the size, you're also losing film resolution. So it's acting in a certain way. You can adjust the amount. So let's just, for the sake of it, we're just going to crank it up. It just doesn't look nice in general having this much. So another really neat feature with Dehancer Pro compared to the Film Look Creator is with Dehancer Pro, um, you actually get adjustments to, you know, the amount of film grain in the shadows, midtones, and highlights. So if you can see, when I adjust the shadows, you can see that um, it's, you know, either putting more grain in the shadows or taking it out. Uh, midtones, then highlights, which will be pretty much the blown out area here. It'll just affect that. What else does it have? Flicker. And let's just adjust the amounts and then the rates just to make it more exaggerated for this video. So it's subtle, you can kind of see the statue and on the building that there's more of a flicker to it the flicker inside of um, the film will create so you do get that effect as well, which is a nice feature to have. So now let's look at Dehance's version of the flicker. Yes, film breath. So let's just check that. And let's just, to make it exaggerated, you know, um, this, when you bring it lower, this period value, it'll make it flicker a little bit more um, just again for the sake of this video we're going to adjust the exposure range the tonal contrast so that's another thing with film breath is you can adjust the exposure which you know is your standard flicker which pretty much that's what you get in the film look creator um, plugin inside of davinci resolve 19 but with this you get a few more features in there you get um, tonal contrast um, and you can also adjust the color hue so again flick the color i'm going to start it from here and as you can see it shifts the color as well very slightly and there's a bit more of a random flicker to it so this you know feels more natural to it so yeah with the flicker you can see it dancing a bit more down at the bottom here so you got flicker and then gate weave so gate weave is probably not the best example for this bit of footage but if you have a static shot you'll be able to see it kind of bouncing up and down. So uh, let's just enable gate weave. Uh, let's just adjust the amount. Let's just really crank it up. So it's hard to tell, but there's a bit more of a bounce to it. And Dehancer Pro. So you have the auto zoom, so you'll be able to see it punch in more. Um, oops, let's just turn off film breath. So period, I'll just leave it at one just because that'll make it more intense. So you can adjust the translation X and Y, which is your up and down. And that's the best way I can explain it right now. Um, and then you have rotation as well. So, you know, so it does a bit more of a, um, let's just enable it. So as you can see, it zooms in. If you do auto zoom, Let's just um, see what happens. Yeah, so you can see that it's jittering. I'm gonna do auto zoom just so you don't see the black edges, you know, on the edge of the aspect ratio, the 16 by nine aspect ratio. So as you can see, gives it a bit more of an intense flicker. So there's one thing that the Film Look Creator actually doesn't have compared to Dehancer Pro, and that is the film gate. So, uh, the film gate, let's just enable it. So now with the film gate, you can, you have some presets. So you got 35 millimeter silent, you got academy. So you can pretty much adjust different aspect ratios. So if you're trying to create like a super eight sort of film look, so let's just do that super, super eight. So it gives you the correct aspect ratio 
to um, give it that sort of look as well. Um, you can also, oh, let's go 2.4 to 1, which is your sort of widescreen cinematic ratio bar type effect, um, which makes it easier instead of just doing a crop later on. Uh, so you can just, you know, uncheck that. So to basically sum up this video, um, there is a difference between the film look creator and Dehancer. Now, does the film look creator plugin inside of DaVinci Resolve 19, does that actually replace Dehancer Pro? You know what, I don't think so. I think Dehancer Pro is still a very powerful tool. Um, as you can see the differences, Dehancer Pro has a lot more adjustments that you can make inside of the plugin compared to the film look creator. The film look creator is something that, you know, if you don't have Dehancer Pro, you can, you know, still use the film look creator to create certain looks. So yeah, the film look creator is more of a tool to get you started. Um, you still have to do some work in terms of creating the uh, film look. If you want certain film stock, you know, LUTs, you may have to still apply them you can get like a standard cinematic look, but Dehancer Pro gives you more adjustments and you actually get to play with film stocks. So there's a whole bunch of film stocks that have been added and still keeps getting updated by Dehancer. So that's it for this video. If you guys found this video helpful, don't forget to give it a thumbs up. If you are new to this channel, don't forget to hit the subscribe button and click the notification bell to stay notified for my next uploads. And I'll see you guys next time.